Hi everyone, my name is Marink Spasiewicz and in this video I will talk about creating an API gateway for your microservices in ASP.NET Core. An API gateway acts as a mediator between client applications and the backend services within the microservices architecture. It is a software layer that functions as a single endpoint for various APIs performing tasks such as request composition, routing and protocol translation. To be able to create the gateway project, I will use Ocelot. Ocelot is an open source API gateway designed for microservices architecture and in this video you will see how it makes the process of creating an API gateway so easy. Also, I will show you how we can cache results and implement rate limiting using Ocelot. That said, if you like the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps me a lot and supports the channel as well. So let's move on. The main focus will be on creating the gateway. So I already have two microservice projects created. Both projects have the same structure and to be honest, there is nothing too special inside each of them. You can find the repository class, which is an in-memory repository with three methods. And also a controller with three endpoints for get all, get by ID and insert actions. Of course, here I am injecting a repository inside the controller for simplicity reasons, because having a service layer would bring no benefits for the topic I am trying to cover. As I said, both projects have the same structure. But one important thing differs for each one, the launch settings file. If we check the application URL of the article project, we can see the project runs on localhost 5001. For the writes project, the application runs on localhost 5002. Now, with all this prepared, we can create a new empty web API project as I already did. Now, to be able to use Ocelot in my project, I need to install the Ocelot package. So let's call the install package command and add the name of the package. Okay, this is done. Also, I will run this project at port 5003, which you can see in the launch settings file. Once it is done, we are ready to create our configuration file. At the root of the project, I will create a new JSON file and name it ocelot.json. As you can see, my API project doesn't have the controllers folder, so there is no controller class at all because Ocelot relies on the configuration file to create the gateway between different microservices. To start, let's modify the file and define two keys. The first one is a global configuration key and for now it will be an empty object. And the second one is the routes key with an empty array as the initial value. Ok, that's it for now and let's configure our project in the program class to use Ocelot. First, I will use the builder.configuration property and add a new JSON configuration provider for this new file. And I will state that the file is not optional and I want the configuration to be reloaded on any change. Also, I will use the builder.services.addOcelot method to add the Ocelot services inside the service collection. Also, in the middleware section, I need to call the useOcelot method to add the Ocelot inside the ASP.NET course pipeline. With this done, I can return to the JSON file and inside the global configuration key set up our API gateway host and port. The key will be base URL and the value will be HTTPS localhost 5003. The same one I specified in the launch settings file for this project. Now I'm ready to utilize the route section to create endpoints that Ocelot needs to prepare the gateway. You remember I have three actions in my writers controller for get, get by ID and post. Well, I will configure the gateway for all of those in this file. First, I will add the upstream path template key. It defines the URL of the API gateway that receives the requests. So in this case, I will say slash gateway slash writers. This will be the API gateway endpoint for the get all writers action. 
Next, I need to define the method type with the upstream HTTP method. It defines the HTTP methods get put post patch that the API gateway uses to distinguish between the requests. Now, I'm done with the upstream or the gateway level and need to focus on the downstream or the microservice level. So, let's add the downstream path template which represents the endpoint at the microservice that is going to receive the request. In other words, it takes the request of the upstream path template and redirects to the downstream path template. This must match the URI from the writer's controller for each specific action. To continue, let's add the downstream scheme key, which represents the protocol to communicate with the microservice. In this case, HTTPS. Lastly, I need the downstream host and ports, which is an array that defines the host and port from the microservices that are going to receive the requests. That said, let's add the host as a local host and also the port as 5002. These values must match values from the writer's launch settings file. Okay, this one is done. And I have two more endpoints for the writer's microservice. Because the configuration is almost the same, let's copy this one and paste it two more times. Now, for the get by ID endpoint, I have to modify the upstream path template and provide the ID parameter and also have to do the same for the downstream path template. That's all I have to change for this one. For the last one, the only thing I need to change is the HTTP method to post. You can see the pattern here and how easy it is to configure this file. Now I have one more microservice, the authors one, with three endpoints, get all, get by ID and delete. And let's simply paste the configuration for that project. You can see the same pattern here as well, just this time I'm using the same JSON object for the get by ID and delete actions because the configuration is the same. Okay, once all our APIs are inside the same .NET solution, we need to configure the Visual Studio to run every API simultaneously. To do that, let's right click on the solution and then click Properties. With the property window open, in the left menu, we choose the option Startup Project. Then in the right section, we choose the Multiple Startup Projects option and change all microservices action to start. Notice that when we run the application, it is going to start all microservices we have in our solution. Now, instead of requesting our microservice endpoints directly, I'm targeting only the Ocelot API Gateway upstream path template. So, let's run the app and use Postman to test this. To request all the articles from our database, let's send a request to localhost 5003 gateway articles. You can see, I'm not targeting the articles endpoint directly, but still getting the expected result. Also, if I want to get a specific writer from the database, let's make a new request. And there you go, the expected result. The local host 5003 means that we are making requests to our Ocelot API gateway. The slash gateway slash article and the slash gateway slash writers slash one represents the upstream path template we previously configured in the ocelot.json file from our API gateway. Excellent. With the API gateway working, let's see some additional features we can apply with Ocelot as well. Ocelot has a bunch of features and as I said in this video, I will implement two of them. Let's start with the rate limiting. Rate limiting is the process of restricting the number of requests for a resource within a specific time window. In this scenario, I want to limit the number of requests for the API articles endpoint. In the current configuration, I need to add a new rate limit options object with some properties. First, I need to set the enable rate limiting property value to true to enable rate limiting for this endpoint. Then the second property I need to set up is the period. This property defines the specific time window that this rate limit is acting on. I use 10s for seconds, 
but you can use M for minutes, H for hours, or D for days. The next property is the limit. It defines the maximum number of requests within 10 seconds, defined inside the period property. Finally, I need to add the period time span property that defines the number of seconds we need to wait to request this endpoint after we get the maximum number of requests within the period. In this case, let's set its value to 10 seconds. Once we request this upstream path template more than 3 times within 10 seconds, the API gateway will return a too many requests with status code 429. Well, let's check that. Let's send this request 3 times within the 10 seconds period. And once we send the fourth one, we get the proper response. Great. Now, the other feature I want to cover is using cache with Ocelot. First, I need to install the Ocelot caching package. After the installation is done, I need to add the cache manager to our services inside the program class. So, I will call the add cache manager method. This is an extension method for adding caching with Ocelot. Of course, we have to use this using statement. And inside the action delegate, I want to call the with dictionary handle method to add a cache dictionary cache handle to cache manager. Then again, I need to modify the configuration file. Let's apply caching to the API writer's endpoint. First, I will add the file cache options object to the endpoint I want to cache. And then set the TTL seconds or time to live in seconds property to 10, which means the time that the Ocelot is going to cache the data. After that time, Ocelot is going to discard the cache. While the data is in the cache, the API gateway doesn't make an HTTP request to our microservice. That means we are saving resources from our microservice. Once the cache expires, the API gateway requests the microservice one more time and saves the data in the cache again. To test this, I will open the writer's controller and add the breakpoint inside the get action. Now, let's run the app and send the request. You can see I hit the breakpoint. So, let's continue here and I have my result. But next time, if I send the same request again within the 10 seconds, you can see I didn't hit my breakpoint, but the data is here. Awesome! I hope you now have a clear picture of what Ocelot is and how to implement an API gateway using Ocelot. Also, you are able to see how easily you can work with some additional features like rate limiting and caching. As I said, Ocelot has a lot more features and one of those is authentication and authorization, which I will cover in the next video. That said, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and the bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.